Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain how I became a superhero. This movie tells the story of a new drug that can give a superpower to mere mortals. When teenagers start using their superpowers for fun, a cop tries to silence them all. Can a police officer unravel the mystery behind the emergence of superhuman powers? Let's find out in How I Became a Superhero. How I Became a Superhero begins with an incident at a nightclub that caught fire and claimed many lives. Gary Morrow, who was busy resting at his house, was suddenly called by the police commander who was his superior to investigate the nightclub fire case. However, Gary arrived late to the crime scene. He could not further investigate the fire case because all the forensic officers had gone home. The investigation at the nightclub also turned out to have been quickly resolved by Cecil Schaltzman, a new police officer. After the incident, Gary was called by his commander. Seeing Gary's declining performance, his commander took the initiative to give him a partner, Cecil, to assist him in investigating the next case. Gary is forced to accept the commander's proposal despite his apparent reluctance and begins working with Cecil. The following case appears with a terror in a high school in Paris. When they arrived, things were already looking very chaotic. Many victims fell and it was seen that a teenage boy who had super strength was walking in the school corridor while spitting fire out of his hands to make all his friends run in fear. In another room, a young woman also has superpowers. An electric shock can come out from her eyes, but she cannot control the power. Therefore, she had to hide in the toilet to not hurt her schoolmates. The police who had arrived and surrounded the school were seen gathering and planning strategies upstairs while watching the teenage boy who was standing in the schoolyard. The teenage boy was attacking his friends by shooting fire from his hands. Cecil immediately ran down the school stairs to save them. However, it turned out that Gary had come first to the school field and tried to calm the boy while walking towards him. Finally, he was persuaded and immediately paralyzed by the police. Two canisters of liquid were seen that fell from the teenage boy's pocket and the police confiscated the liquid bottles. In another part of Paris, seen in an old warehouse, a teenage boy is trading small tubes filled with liquid to a group of teenagers. The small tube is the same liquid that the police found when they arrested a teenage boy in high school a few days ago. By inhaling the liquid from the small tube, the person can immediately have superpowers such as spitting fire from their hands. Many teenagers try to inhale the liquid and practice their superpowers by spitting fire in public areas. Elsewhere, Gary meets an old man named Monte Carlo, an old friend. Gary contacts him to seek information about superhuman powers capable of emitting fire. Then, Monte Carlo mentioned one name that might be the mastermind of this chaos, namely Brazero. Gary immediately moved to find information about the whereabouts of Brazero. Arriving at the police station, Gary attended a meeting with the police team and his commander to discuss the recent fire cases. They suspect that the fire came from a magical liquid that can give superpowers to humans. Gary informs his commander that most likely the mastermind who sells the liquid is Brazero. The scene moves to a sports hall where a beautiful woman named Callista is teaching her students to exercise. Callista is a member of the disbanded Park Royal Superhero Group. Callista has superpowers where she can see what will happen in someone's future through her eyes. Not long after, Gary came to Callista who was coaching basketball. He asked her to help him find Brazero's whereabouts. However, Callista refused. Disappointed, Gary and his partner returned to the police headquarters. While on his way back to the police station, Gary got a call from a forensic expert to come to the laboratory immediately. When he arrived at the laboratory, he saw a pile of bodies covered in burns. From his physical characteristics, the burning corpse turned out to be the person he had been looking for, namely Brazero. From the forensic results, the doctor found that the cause of his burns was the same liquid found by the police when handling a terror case at a high school the other day. Based on the body's findings, Gary and Cecil begin to interrogate people related to Brazero. One of them is the boss where Brazero works, Brazero's wife and a psychiatrist who has worked on the Brazero case. A few days later, in a high school library, a teenage boy named Ruddy came to a girl named Lily. Lily has a superpower where her eyes can give off electric shocks when a terror in high school occurred some time ago. Ruddy then had a conversation and gave Lily the phone number by writing it down on a piece of paper. It turned out to be the phone number of a psychiatrist who had worked with Brazero. Ruddy assures Lily that this psychiatrist can provide trauma healing sessions for those who have superpowers and cannot control them. Lily was interested and would call the psychiatrist. Meanwhile, Gary who was at the police station was busy checking the files of the fire case that occurred at the club some time ago. He found that the number of victims differed from what he saw through the CCTV camera. Realizing that something was odd, he immediately called Cecil to check on a fire victim who was seen on CCTV but the name was not registered in the victim's data. 
They immediately visited the hospital where the victim was being treated. The victim is a teenage boy named Amine. Gary and Cecil interrogate Amine, asking where did he get the liquid that gave him superpowers. At first Amine dodged, however, Cecil was not at her wit's end. She threatened that if Amine refused to tell, the police would not provide an antidote for the liquid he had inhaled. It turns out that the liquid causes side effects that can make his body explode. Hearing that, Amine finally told her where he bought the magic liquid from. Amine admitted that he got the magic liquid from Ismail who sold the liquid outside the school area. Many of his friends have bought and tried the magic liquid. After investigating, it turns out that Ismail got the liquid from a big dealer named Naja, a middle-aged man who produces a lot of magical liquids in his laboratory and circulates them among teenagers. The scene then switches to a laboratory room in a hidden building. There's Ruddy in the laboratory. Naja was scolding some of his men because some important liquid had been lost from his laboratory. The liquid was apparently stolen by Ismail. Naja angrily ordered his men to immediately find and arrest Ismail. Ismail is seen in the hallway of an apartment to enter his house. However, he felt suspicious when he saw some people he had never seen before. It turned out that those people were policemen who were watching him. Ismail immediately ran away from his apartment. However, the police chased him and finally he was arrested. He was immediately taken to the police station. He was interrogated by several police officers who asked him where he had gotten the dangerous liquid. However, Ismail remained silent and refused to answer police questions. This confused Gary and Cecil. A moment later, Gary's cell phone suddenly rang while buying coffee outside his office. The call turned out to be Monte Carlo. His partner says that after Brazero's death, it turns out that there are other people out there who have superpowers and can temporarily blind others. The man who has superpowers is Eclipso. Monte Carlo suspects that the possibility of Eclipso has something to do with the recent case. When Gary was on the phone, suddenly there was a riot in the police station. It turned out that the commotion was triggered by Naja and Eclipso's men who wanted to get Ismail out of the police station. Naja's men attacked the police with their super strength by spitting fire from their hands. Eclipso even made some policemen temporarily blind so that the situation in the office looked chaotic and messy. Gary immediately went upstairs and saw Cecile who was also temporarily blind and almost fell down the stairs. As fast as he could, Gary ran and tried to grab Cecile's hand where her body was already rolling from the floor above. Gary suddenly realized that he also has superpowers where his hands can control objects and make them float without touching them. He then moved his hand and there was a light emanating from his hand while grabbing Cecil. Cecil finally landed safely without hitting the floor. Ismail saw the incident, now he knows that Gary also has superpowers. Naja, who had succeeded in getting Ismail out of prison, immediately angrily interrogated him. Naja asks his men to kill Ismail because he has betrayed them. Ismail begs Naja for forgiveness and says that a policeman has superpowers. Unfortunately, even though he had received this information, he still killed Ismail. Naja then immediately ordered his men to find Gary and took the policeman to his laboratory. Sometime later, in a different place, Callista was seen having a conversation with Alex, one of her students. Alex said that his two friends wanted to try a liquid that could give them superpowers. Callister rushed to find the two students. However, she got a vision that her two students died after inhaling the dangerous liquid. As it turned out, the liquid was different from the liquid they had inhaled before. This liquid was blue and was a new product made by Naja. Her two students got the liquid for free by Naja's men. Unfortunately, they did not know that they were used as experimental material for testing the new liquid sample. Meanwhile at the police station, a mother complains about the loss of her daughter. It turns out her daughter's name is Lily. Gary moved quickly to find Lily. However, without realizing it, he has actually been followed by Naja's men who want to kidnap him. Meanwhile, in Naja's laboratory, a girl is seen lying limply unconscious. That girl was Lily whose blood was being drawn to be mixed as an ingredient for the new liquid produced by Naja. Naja learns from Ruddy that Lily has superhero powers. It turns out that Lily's superhero power came from her father, Gigaman, who was a member of the Park Royal superhero group, who died some time ago. At Lily's house, Gary meets with Callista who investigating Lily's whereabouts because she suspects that her two students who died have something to do with Lily's disappearance. Because they did not get the evidence they were looking for, Callista finally left Gary alone. Gary then searched Lily's house to look for clues to her disappearance. He accidentally found a piece of paper containing the phone number of a psychiatrist that Lily got from Ruddy. Unexpectedly, Gary is attacked from behind and injected with drugs by Naja's men. Then his body was transported to a car parked in the parking area. Cecil and Callista watched the kidnapper transporting Gary's body from a distance. They immediately attacked the car to help him. Gary is injured by being shot three times by Naja's men. 
His body bounced out of the van and lay on the parking floor. Cecil and Callista immediately took Gary to Monte Carlo's house. Because of his super strength, the bullets lodged in Gary's body can be released by flying into the air. After taking care of Gary, Callista tells Cecil that Gary has superpowers and was invited to join the Park Royal superhero group. However, at that time Gary could not control his power. He made a fatal mistake where his intention to help Gigaman actually killed him. Gary moved the object towards the explosive canister and Gigaman's body fell from the floor above. That incident traumatized Gary and he vowed never to use his superpowers again. After hearing the story, Cecil was reminded of the paper Gary found at Lily's house that contained a telephone number. They immediately searched for information through the computer about the phone number owner, which turned out to be a psychiatrist named Elizabeth. Eventually, the police installed a bug in Elizabeth's office and kept an eye on her. Police discovered that Elizabeth had worked with a professor. Cecil immediately went to the professor who was a very smart old man. He told her that Nadja had been the object of his research, which made his superpowers disappear. That's why Nadja wanted to produce a liquid that could give him the superpowers he once had. Elizabeth, who is not aware of being watched by Callista, goes to Nadja's laboratory. Callista then managed to find out the headquarters and laboratory where Nadja produced the magic liquid. The police moved to surround Nadja's headquarters. Before the police arrived, Nadja, who already knew of the police's arrival, immediately asked his men to pack up and bring all the magic liquid he produced from his laboratory. He also took Lily away with him. Nadja's men then used the magic liquid to attack the police. However, Nadja's men are desperate with Gary and Callista's superpowers. Meanwhile, Nadja took Lily to get out of the building area. On the way, they meet Gary who is ready to attack Nadja. Nadja immediately inhaled as much magic liquid as possible to have superpowers so that he became even stronger. He then attacked Gary. However, Gary was not at his wit's end. He ran into Nadja's arms and flew as high as he could by carrying him into the sky. Not long after, Nadja's body exploded from inhaling too much magic liquid and made Gary fall back to the ground. Gary was safe even though his body was full of wounds. At the end of the story, a news reporter is seen on TV reporting the return of the Park Royal superhero group and also a new, unknown hero. Meanwhile at Monte Carlo's house, Gary, Cecil, Callista and Monte Carlo were seen celebrating their victory against Nadja. The film ends. Mm -hmm.